and welcome to The View from the EBRD. This year we are in Jordan at the Dead Sea. And um, I am now with Sergei Guriev, the bank's chief economist. Thank you very much for making it. Thanks a lot for inviting me, Stephanie. Now, Sergei, you've um, just released your new economic forecast, and it looks good for the next two years. The next two years, all countries of operations, all 37, are meant to grow. But the caveat is that there might be some overheating. What do you put that down to? So indeed, in some countries of operations, we observe overheating, meaning that countries grow above the potential growth level and the growth rate, and that is related to credit stimulus rolled out by some governments, which should have been instead uh, building fiscal buffers for more difficult times, should instead concentrate on structural reform rather than on uh, investing in increasing aggregate demand. And this is, this is something that we observe in some countries where inflation is higher than it should have been, credit growth is faster than it should have been, and that's uh, where we are concerned that opportunity to prepare for a slowdown for more difficult times may be missed. And the way to deal with it is structural reforms. Now, do you feel like banks, banks, do you feel like countries, governments actually, are receptive? Well, we see some countries where we don't have overheating. On average, we do see that countries invest more in structural reforms than before. And of course, if you are con committed to structural reforms, if you know that you need to conduct them, of course, it's easier to do when you have a growing economy, when you have resources to compensate those left behind because of the structural dislocations, because of structural reforms. In that sense, I won't be pessimistic there as well. It's just in some countries, instead of investing in structural reforms, countries actually support credit growth and therefore push for uh, overheating rather than uh, rather than doing the right thing. And you've mentioned also a few risks uh, to the forecast. Um, so there's uh, corporate debt raise, um, r levels rising um, and also populism growing within the region or in, in general. Um, now, your largest countries of operation is, is Turkey, and you could say you have both there, and you've also just had the lira dropping to new lows um, after Donald Trump's decision on Iraq, uh, Iran rather. Um, <laughs> what's your I'm expectation not now? For a day, maybe there is another decision, but uh, you probably meant the yesterday's uh, Iran. Iran, yes, okay, Iran. So uh, overall, if we talk about Turkey, this is one of the countries where we, where we saw growth well above the potential. We and other international financial institutions estimate the potential growth at four, four and a half percent. Some institutions would say five, but not seven and a half that we observed last year. And part of that growth was explained by the credit guarantee fund, which was a, exactly an example of supporting credit growth above and beyond what should have been done. And that is why Turkey has high inflation. And that is actually why uh, you, you don't have a long-term lira yield curve. You cannot borrow long-term in local currency, which pushes firms to borrow in uh, foreign currency, which makes them vulnerable to implications of uh, devaluation. So this uh, builds a problem which needs to be addressed now when times are actually good. And in that sense, we would support uh, tougher monetary policy, we would support fighting inflation, we would support developing local currency financial markets to reduce the vulnerability of Turkish economy to volatility in the international financial flows. So this is, this is an example where you want to, you want to actually uh, reduce the support for, uh, for overheating, you, you want to invest in something else. Are you happy with what you're seeing so far in a response? Well, we'll see. So far, inflation is double digit. So far, the government has not actually committed to increasing rates fast enough and uh, uh, decisively enough. So we do see inflation not coming down to the levels that would help firms to borrow in local currency. So I think challenges remain, but we forecast slower growth this year than previous year exactly because the growth at seven and a half percent is just not sustainable you can uh, run above potential growth rate for a while but the longer you run your growth in the overheating mode the more imbalances you build and the more problems you create for slowdown and normalization after after you decide to normalize